Hey, what's up, you guys? If this shot looks familiar, that means you watched the end of yesterday's video. We're back here at Ray Outfitted, and hopefully in this video or the next video, this video, Rainer? Just say yes, just say yes, right? Yeah. yeah, in this video, we're gonna finish my electrical. Finish it all. <laughs> you just said yeah. Hi, I'm Rainer from Ray Outfitted. Today, we're gonna be wiring up Chrome's 120 volt in his van. Let's take a look. Next step is to make sure that the batteries are secure because we all know Chrome likes to go down a lot of back roads and throw this van around. So we're gonna strap the batteries in, make sure that they are strapped to the bed frame and that they can't go anywhere. I've seen batteries strapped down in so many different ways, but I, I definitely like this one. Oh, well, good, because that's what you're getting. <laughs> I don't have a choice at this point. Now that we've got all our batteries in, connected, and strapped down, we're gonna do the cable management for it. So right now you can see the cables are just kind of sitting here. We're gonna go around with a bunch of wire ties. We've got the nice honeycomb here. And just take our wire tie through, make sure it's in the right spot where we want it. Just do it a tight pull. Grab our side cutters and snip that off. Over here, you can see here's our four battery cables from our four batteries uh, to the one side of our shunt. And then we've got our ground up to the front and we've got our chassis ground so that all this is good and connected. And then we've got our PCB down there with the communication cable up to the battery monitor and then our battery temperature sensor back to the batteries back here. The reason we put the battery temperature sensor on this side is it's the furthest away from the heater so it's gonna take more effort to get the heat over to this side so that we know what the temperature in this side is and then we'll know that those ones over there definitely are warm. Uh, while Chrome's batteries were up in the front, there was no reason to heat underneath the bed. Now that the batteries are here, uh, we can see that we've actually redone all the ducting. So it used to come just straight from the heater right to the outside vent. Now there's a T here, which passes air back and another T here which passes air to uh, this controller for the back. And then it comes across the front of the bed and around back to a controller here. And the reason we put controllers here is so that uh, Chrome can regulate how much heat gets to the batteries in case he needs them to be a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer. That way he can have as much heat as he needs out in the living space and then regulate how much goes to the back portion for the batteries. Nice to see you, Ryan. Yeah, nice to be seen. Oh, it's perfect. Be able to get in there and see to change the fuses and stuff, and that will be put onto this middle switch here. So if I ever need to change anything or check on something, yeah. Awesome. Looks good. What's going on over here? I'm thinking I might stuff a vacuum cleaner in here or something like that. Nice. So this is my uh, charging bracket and the power cable goes through the bottom here. And this is what's going to be put in that bottom drawer. On the bottom of that cabinet used to be a whole big board. Well, they've chopped the bottom half and this bottom board will be the face on the drawer where the Dyson vacuum is gonna go. I just see flashing lights. What do we got? Oh, that is so perfect. Nice job, Rainer, nice job. No kinda like it. Me too. He's doing something that I never did when I put mine together before, and that's label up each of the fuses. You see, I never kept this thing. I don't know why I never kept it, or if I lost it or broke it or something like that, but having it labeled on exactly what everything is, so when it's on the fuse panel, I know. So what I do, but what I did before is I just pull fuses out until I figured out which one it was. This is gonna make things so much easier. Oh, having snacks on the table is is a bad bad idea for me. The 
if you guys don't want any of these chips, I've been eating them. So in here is going to be two regular wall plugs, which will be live anytime I turn my inverter on. So if I ever need to plug in my coffee grinder or anything, there'll be two plugs here. And up here will be switches. So I can turn on my Starlink, turn on my speakers. And I don't know if we have anything else to throw on that one. That might just be an open one for now. It's crazy, after five years, it feels like my home's just starting to come together. <laughs> uh, like I have light switches and stuff. You gotta cut those out so that Rai can make the wedges for the front. Oh uh, yeah. I decided we're gonna mount the Starlink box up top there, leaving that whole compartment down there for electrical and stuff, and also leading, leaving my Starlink out where I can see it but we're gonna drop it down into that cabinet a little bit. So this cabinet's got a shelf down here, so we're gonna drop this down, down to the shelf level, um, kind of bracing this in there, that way it's not sitting so tall. It'll probably leave it about that height, which would be awesome. So what the guys are trying to figure out right now is my idea of putting the Starlink up here. And uh, they're coming up with some ideas on how to get it in there to make it look good and also make it secure. And I think that's a pretty good spot for it. You know, you can still see the speaker. Yeah, and you can see the front of the Starlink, which is always a conversation piece too. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out really well. So they're gonna try and clean this up there. There's a front face going on here. snacks all over again. Maybe overlooking everything? They're all good? Hey, everybody working? <laughs> You're the foreman, buddy. You're the boss. I think that's a really good placement for the Starlink. It's a lot better, I think, than having it put in behind this cabinet there. A little piece you might be looking for. That all goes through there. Lower. Oh, it's gonna be sad when I put the seat back in. We're not gonna be able to see it anymore. And I really like that all these things down here are upright. It looks a lot sleeker from that side, so I'm not seeing all this electrical stuff and the plugs and stuff hanging out the front. The awesome thing now about running Victron Energy on all my stuff is that this is my DC to DC charging. This is my solar charge controller. So now within my Victron app that you guys see me using all the time, I'll be able to see the individual systems on their own, where before it was just giving me like an overview of everything. I have Bluetooth access to every single one of these devices, which is gonna make monitoring my system a lot better in the future. Over here in the corner, you guys would have seen just a pile of cable always sitting here. After I'm done editing, I would just shove this and the charging block back here in the corner. So we're gonna mount this to the wall with just some double-sided tape right here. So that way when I need to use the cable, I just plug it in. And when I'm done with my laptop, the cable comes out with it and all that's left is a block attached to the cabinet. Right there. Bada boom, baby. Oh yeah, baby. We're good. Now that's secured to that. Now I won't have that ever unplugging again. And when I need to use my laptop, it gets plugged into there. That's it. <laughs> Why didn't I do this stuff years ago? So in the back corner over here where the SOK batteries are, he has a cable strap across the top, which has locked those things right down and in the corner. And now he's just putting a block on the side to kind of cage everything all in nice and tight. That way when I'm bouncing around and bouncing back and forth in the back country, the batteries are gonna stay locked in right there with no problems at all. So in my system, I have my Victron battery monitor, which was the only thing I could see before. But now that we're running Victron energy in the whole van, I can see my solar controller and both of my DC to DC charge controllers, which is wicked. So all I gotta do is push that and I can see everything that's going on on my solar front where before I really pretty much just got like a full overview of the system. Now I can actually dig deeper into it. So Madison, can you help me with this? Yeah. So when you're in the Victron app, you'll be able to see my devices. And then when you're in, your, in a shop like Ray Outfitted, other devices, because we've got a few installs coming up. So we've got a, I think a, a lot of 
a lot of, yep. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, just a couple. <laughs> your device is what we're looking at. So we'll start with the battery monitor. The, one of the ways I look at the battery monitor, is it's kind of like the instant fuel calculator that some vehicles have. That when you put your foot on the gas, you're gonna see a difference. So this time remaining is that instant calculator. So right now it's saying null because we're probably on shore power still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So time remaining is infinite because we're not using anything. Um, what this lets us see is what the voltage is at. Something just kicked on in your van, so it's bouncing some power. When it's positive numbers, that is power coming in. When it is negative, that is power coming out. Hi, Maud. <laughs> Are you gonna help us? Perfect, thank you. So what the battery monitor lets you see is the net. The power coming in, less the power you're drawing. So while we see right now while we're talking, it's bouncing between bringing power in and not bringing power in. It's basically when something needs power, since we're at 100%, shore power kicks on and gives that little bit of power we need. And then it goes back off. Ultimately, what this is called is your batteries are in float. You'll see we have a temperature. This lets uh, the controller, both your solar and your DC to DC chargers, know what temperature your batteries are at. So when your batteries are below zero, one, you'll be able to see that, and two, your solar and alternator chargers will know I'm not meant to charge lithium batteries until we're above zero. So this will be your main place you're looking for to see the state of your system. When we go to the history tab, this one is a little more for the technical geeks. Geeks, The deepest discharge so far is 35 amp hours. I'm gonna bet Chrome is gonna test those limits. Oh yeah, so his, 100%. <laughs> so his new system is 400 amp hours. So we expect we'll see a, a deeper discharge than the 35 amp hours. The last discharge right now is zero, but you'll be able to see it as Chrome uses a system, you'll be able to show you changes. The average discharge will be a great insight a few months down the road for Chrome of on average, how much power does he discharge before he gets his batteries back up to 100%. The cumulative amp hours drawn, I find really funny. I think the Ray Outfitted van is like 37,000 amp hours we've drawn over the years. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. So that's like your bragging rights of off-grid way down the road. Same with this. If you were ever having trouble, this is one of the screenshots Ray Outfitted asks for its customers, where I get to see what the min and max and how many low or high voltage alarms. This gives us a sense of what's going on in the system. For those that aren't used to Victron, within this settings, the goal is that now that it's set, Chrome doesn't need to touch anything. But some people will complain their Victron uh, battery app doesn't work correctly. It's typically because you have incorrectly set up the capacity, the charge, voltage, the discharge, and these specs. Every different type of battery has different specs that need to go in here. And so when this is incorrect, your system's gonna be incorrectly reporting. If you think about it, while we talk about Victron um, battery monitors being really smart, they're as smart as the data they have. So if we've got bad information setting up, when it's watching the shunt and seeing what power is coming back and forth, it can be misreporting. Sometimes these apps will reset if you drain your batteries right down. And when you finally get power again, it'll jump to 100% because it goes, I don't know where I am, I'll start at 100. And it won't be accurate until you fully charge the batteries up, showing it what's full, and then it'll be able to keep going. Chrome now has a Victron Energy MPPT solar charge controller. This gives him way more access to solar data than he had before. So now when we go in, exactly how many watts his solar panels are producing, zero watts inside our shop is expected. It'll tell you what the voltage and the amps are of coming from your solar. It notes what the temperature is of your batteries again, because it needs to decide, should I charge or not? We're currently off because it thinks it's basically nighttime. If we were outside right now, even if it was sunny, since his batteries are 100%, this would say float. For those that get confused, Victron's starting to try to help. Why is my charger off? Because there's no solar. It's important to remember, unlike on a grid-tied solar system, a van solar system only produces power when your batteries need it. So if you're at 100% and you're wondering why there's no solar, it's because there's nowhere for that power to go, so we shut it off. Inside the solar app, Chrome will get to have fun once he's used the system more. It gives you a history. So this is just shows one day, but to get a sense of it, you'll actually be able to do 30 days of history. And it will tell you is that today he's produced 10 watt hours. So that was an hour and a half in bulk charge. If we were outside, you'd be able to see it hit absorption and float. These bulk absorption float is the three charging stages that all lithium batteries need to go through. Bulk is the majority, send maximum power. Absorption is really about balancing the cells. 
and float. We're waiting till we need more power. We're just floating. The last piece that Chrome now has in his batteries is these two Orions. So this is 60 amps combined of alternator DC to DC charging. These apps only give you so much information and it's really all you need to know. It is off because the engine is off. If Chrome was driving and he was curious to see what each of his Victron Orions were doing, he'd be able to see if they're on or off and what voltage is coming through. What a boom. Dyson vacuum in there, hardwired to the back, charging, slide it right there in the front, and that's it. Shut it out of the way, and it's charging while I drive. I'm good. Time to hit the road, my friends. Madison, thank you. Great Rainer, to see you. thank you. The shop door just broke. Wait, you're holding a little. Rainer, I know you're going to miss me, you bro. Can, you can just stay. The shop door just broke. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But we got a full cake for you. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, maybe. Thank you out. for everything. I am heading out. You paid off your ransom? I haven't paid my ransom yet. That's up to her to send me. Ah, that means we get to get back on the road again. We're the, super excited for you to get back on the road. Have oh my gosh, you guys. Fun. This electrical upgrade is going to change everything for me. Thank you, guys. Our pleasure. No Thank you for feeding me food. Thank you for feeding me beer. All in all, <laughs> a good success. <laughs> Till the next time. Get out. See you guys. <laughs>